Good morning. Today we're going to start learning about One Point Perspective. It is a powerful device for creating a sense of depth. So let's get started. First, we need to have a horizon line. That can be really any place on your paper. Today we're going to put it in the middle of the paper. And in the middle of that horizon line, we want a vanishing point. You can just eyeball it, it's close enough. But let's go ahead and label these. So this is your vanishing point. And this is our horizon line. Now I'm using my HB pencil just so that if I make a mistake, I can more easily erase it. But keeping that in mind, you also might want to draw lightly until you know that all of your lines are in the right place. We are going to make, oh my goodness, I have glitter from another project, so it's just going to be part of this project too. So we are going to make four flying boxes. So I'm going to use my ruler and I'm going to make a box up here in this corner. It needs to be above and to the right of my vanishing point. The size of yours does not need to be exactly the size of mine, but if that's important to you, then my ruler says that it's about two and a half inches by two and a half inches. Now let's go ahead and make a box similar to this, but on the upper left area. I'm gonna put it way over here. Now I am trying to make my boxes so that the uh, horizontal lines are parallel to my horizon line and the vertical lines are parallel to the edge of the page. Basically, you're just trying to make it a square. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer it is, the easier it's going to be to see the magic. Now I'm going to make one that's way down here in this bottom corner. This one looks a little bit bigger than the others and it just doesn't matter. Come down here and make another one over here. If they're a little bit more like rectangles than squares, that's okay. All right, square, 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 square. They look pretty flat. You might be thinking, where's the depth? Here it comes. In each case, the square represents the front face that is closest to the viewer. What we're going to do now is start to draw depth lines. All depth lines go to the vanishing point. This is so critical, I'm gonna have us write it down. All depth lines go to the vanishing point. How do you know if a corner is going to have a depth line. It has to be open to the vanishing point, which means that if I put my pencil here and I put my ruler up and try to strike a line from this corner of my front face to the vanishing point, if it doesn't go through any part of this box, that is open to the vanishing point. This corner, for instance, is not open to the vanishing point. If I were to try to strike a line between this corner and the vanishing point, I would be going through my square. So that is not an open corner. This corner is open. If I draw toward the vanishing point, I'm going to be able to make that line without running through my square. And then this line is open. So now you see the front face, the bottom and the left side. We will come back to this in a minute to finish it. Let's go ahead and find the other open corners. On this box, the open corner going toward the vanishing point is here in the upper right, here in the bottom right, and here in the bottom left. The corner that's not open is this one here. If I try to draw a line from this corner toward my vanishing point, I'm going to go through my box and that means that it's not an open line. 
So when the box is in this position, I see the front face and the side and the bottom face. Let's see what happens down here. I see an open corner in my upper right, an open corner in my upper left, and an open corner in my bottom left. My bottom right is not open because if I were to draw a line toward my vanishing point, it would be going through my front face. And lastly, my square over here, I have an open corner, open corner, and open corner. So now I have one, two, three, four boxes. And you can see that depending on the position of the boxes relative to the vanishing point, sometimes you see the underside, sometimes you see the top side, sometimes you see the right side, sometimes you see the left side. This vanishing point represents your eye line. So this is kind of also like where your eye is. So if you're looking up at a box and it's over here, then you would see the relative sides. But these boxes look like they're going back forever and ever, and they're not actually boxes. So we're going to make them boxes in a really simple way. We're gonna start with the one that's on the top right. And what we want to do is decide where the edge of the back side of the bottom and the back side of the left side is. It's easier than it sounds. So you're going to take your ruler and put it up against the flat side of your face. And then you're just going to pull that ruler toward the vanishing point. So it's going to be coming down and toward the vanishing point. Super important that you don't twist it. You just want to pull it straight to the vanishing point. And as far back as you want to come, strike a line, that is the back bottom of that square. We're gonna do the same thing, this time using your ruler up against the side of our box, and then pulling it back toward the vanishing point, no twisties, and we're gonna pull it until it intersects our bottom line. Now we have a box with one, two, three sides. We can take a minute and erase our construction lines. And now you can really see that box. Let's do it over here too. Take your ruler, put it up against the bottom of your box. Now you're going to pull that back towards your vanishing point and strike a line just wherever you feel good about the size of that box ending. Now rotate that ruler, put it up against the open side that's open to our vanishing point. Take that ruler and slide it toward the vanishing point without twisting it until it intersects that bottom line. There we go. Now we can erase our construction lines really get a look at that 3D box zooming out toward us. Now we're going to take a look at this box, put our ruler up against the open side, which is our top in this case, pull it toward the vanishing point. Now if you stop it here, you'll make a cube. If you stop it way back here, it'll be more like a rectangle or a box. It's up to you. You can make that as long as you want. Now we're going to take the ruler, put it up against the other open side, and slide it back toward the vanishing point until it intersects the top, and that becomes our side. Okay, they're looking good. Now we're going to do the same with the bottom. Line up against the box. Scooch back toward that vanishing point. Strike a line. Put your ruler up against the open side. Drag it toward your vanishing point until it intersects the top. There you go. All right, these are looking really good, but I think we should dress them up a bit. Let's take out our Sharpie 
and harden up those corners now that we know that all of the lines are in the right place. These look great. So now we're gonna make them kind of cute. We're gonna give them faces. I always like to start with my pencil just in case I make a mistake, it's easy to erase. So you can give these any faces that you want. I'm going to do happy, mad, sad, and grad. I'm gonna start with happy over here. I'm going to give this guy just two little slits like this for eyes and then a big old smiley face and I'm going to give him a toothy grin. If I'm happy with it, I'm gonna go ahead and use a thicker Sharpie and color in his hair. Just like shading with pencil, when you're shading with Sharpie, go nice and slow. The slower that you go, the neater it's gonna be and the easier it's gonna be to look at. This one over here is going to be sad. I'm gonna make big round eyes and kind of kawaii eyes, power puff girl eyes, and a little nose and a sad face. Even make little eyebrows. She's having a hard day. And maybe she has ponytails.
If you feel good about your face, you can go ahead and harden it up.
go ahead and add a little bit of color. One thing to keep in mind is if this was actually a cube, wherever the sunlight hits, that side would be the lighter side. So if I'm going to pick yellow for this particular face, then I'm going to do a light yellow on the side that is the sunniest. And then I'm going to do a darker yellow on the side that is less sunny. And I'm going to do a darker yellow still, maybe even an orangey-ish yellow on the side that is the least toward the sun. The same thing with this one. If I'm going to be picking blues, then I'm going to pick my lightest blue for the front of the face. And a medium blue for the side. And a dark blue for the bottom. Over here, okay, maybe he's green. Maybe this is envy. Ooh, I like that. I'll pick my lightest green for the top of his face. So the sun is basically coming from over my back. And a middle or darker green. And since I already shaded in the top of his head, really dark because of his hair, then he doesn't have anything more that I need to worry about. And then this one, maybe I'll make him um, like a nice purple. And a darker purple for his side. Use my pinky or a paper towel and blend in my colors. Always starting with my lightest color first. Clean off my pinky. And just blending that in so that it's a nice soft color. Excellent. Well done, guys. 